Since this is a chapter on measurement, we're now going to talk about something called measured numbers. So you, you might not have thought that there can be different types of numbers, but there actually are. And one of the types of numbers that we will use in this course are a type of number called a measured number. So we're going to talk about measured numbers now. Measured numbers are numbers that you get when you use a device to measure something. And so what do I mean by a device? And, and let me give you a few examples. So as an example, when you use a ruler to measure the height of something, so you could use a ruler to measure your height, the ruler is the device, and the number that you get from your ruler that describes your height is called a measured number, because you're using a device to obtain that number. When you, another example is when you use an odometer in your car to measure how far it is to the grocery store, the distance to the grocery store is a measured number because you're using a device, in this case the device is the odometer, to make the measurement. Another example, if you go to the grocery store and you're trying to weigh out the amount of broccoli that you're going to take home, you usually weigh it out in a balance. So the weight of the broccoli is also a measured number because the device you're using, you're using a device, and in this case the device is a balance to measure the weight of whatever it is that you're measuring out at the grocery store. So anytime you use a device to measure something and to get a number um, by measuring something, that number that you get is called a measured number. Um, and the, the key point to take home here is that the measured numbers that you get when you use a device are not perfectly precise. And I'll explain what I mean by not perfectly precise in a few minutes. But just uh, take it at face value right now that measured numbers, whenever you use a device to make a measurement, they are not perfectly precise numbers. So you can ask yourself, well, you're talking about measured numbers. What is not a measured number? Well, what is not a measured number is something called an exact number. So there are exact numbers and there are measured numbers. So what's an exact number? An exact number is a number, is one of two things. It's either a number that you get when you just count something up. So here you're not using a device at all. If I asked you how many apples are on my kitchen table, you could look at my kitchen table and you could count one, two, three, four, five, and you would say there are five apples on my kitchen table. The number five in this case is an exact number because I'm not using a device. I'm just counting something. The other type of exact number is a number that you get when there's a rule that compares two units of measurement. So as an example, there turn out to be 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. That's just a rule that some committee made up a long time ago that basically allows you to convert between centimeters and inches. When there is a rule for converting different uh, numbers for different units of measurement, those numbers are also exact numbers. So 2.54 centimeters is an exact number. In this case, one inch is an exact number because they're both part of this rule. So two types of exact numbers. Uh, exact numbers you can get when you count things up and don't use a device. And you can also, you are, you are also dealing with exact numbers when you are working with a rule that has been established by a group of people. So here 2.54 centimeters for every one inch is an example of a rule where you're working with exact numbers. As I mentioned two slides ago, I said that measured numbers, in other words, numbers that you get when you use a device to make a measurement, measured numbers are not perfectly precise. So what do I mean by measured numbers are not perfectly precise? Here's an example. On the left side of the slide, you can see a scale. And let's say that the scale says that I weigh 128 pounds. Now, does that mean that I weigh exactly 128 pounds? Hopefully, you'll agree that it doesn't mean that. It's possible that I weigh 128.2 pounds, or it's possible that I weigh 127.9 pounds. But the scale is only good enough to tell me that I weigh 128 pounds, which basically means the scale knows that I weigh less than 129 pounds, and I weigh more than 127 pounds. But it doesn't know exactly how much I weigh. I could weigh 128.2 pounds, and the scale just isn't precise enough to tell me that I weigh 128.2. I could get a more precise scale. So as an example, pretend that I have another scale called scale B, and I step on that scale and it says that I weigh 128.2 pounds. Hopefully you will agree that scale B is more precise than scale A, and it can tell me that I weigh about 128.2 pounds. But even that scale is not perfectly precise. Maybe I weigh 128.2193922 
dot, 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 pounds. In other words, even scale B, which is more precise than scale A, is still not perfectly precise. I could go to scale C, which is really precise compared to scales B and A. But even scale C is not perfectly precise. It's just uh, making a more precise measurement of how much I weigh. But this scale is also not perfectly precise. I, you could extend these decimals out uh, much larger than this. So the, the take-home message here is that whenever you use a device, it doesn't have to be a scale. It can be a ruler. It can be the odometer in your car. It can be the balance at the grocery store. None of the measurements that you get from those devices are perfectly precise. And because of that, number the, none of the numbers that you get out of those devices are perfectly precise. The scale at the grocery store may say that you weighed out five pounds of broccoli, but maybe you weighed out 5.1 pounds, and the scale is only good enough to tell you that you weighed more than four pounds, and you weighed, uh, that your broccoli weighed more than four pounds, and it weighed less than six pounds, so it says five. So the take-home message is no measured number is perfectly precise. Now, the, the bottom three examples are sometimes a little bit confusing to students. So let's pretend that I have another person step on the scale. And the scale says that they weigh, the first scale says that they weigh 135 pounds. Again, hopefully you will realize that scale A is not perfectly precise, and maybe they don't, and they probably don't weigh exactly 135 pounds. Then you bring them to scale B, which as we said is more precise than scale A, and scale B says that they weigh 135.0 pounds. Now, many students often look at this and they say, look, 135.0 is the same thing as 135. So scale B and scale A have the same amount of precision. Pretend that you didn't uh, know that know the information from the top example. And they look at scale B and they say, look, 135.0 pounds is the same thing as 135. That's true in general for math and for numbers. However, for measured numbers, this point zero actually means something. It is telling you that scale B is more precise than scale A. And specifically what it's telling you is that scale B is capable of determining, scale B knows that you weigh you weigh less than 135.1 pounds and you weigh more than 134.9 pounds. In other words, that point zero is actually telling you how precise your measurement is. Scale A, on the other hand, only is only telling you that you weigh more than 134 pounds and less than 136 pounds. And then you can look at the uh, another scale, scale C, which is, is even more precise than the previous two, and it might say 135.00 pounds. Does this mean that you weigh exactly 135.00 pounds? No, it doesn't. What it means is that the scale is, knows that you weigh more than 134.99 pounds and less than 135.01 pounds. But even scale C is not perfectly precise, and it does not mean that you weigh exactly 135 pounds. You could, in theory, weigh 135.0003 pounds, and scale C is just not good enough to find those extra digits uh, out there on the right side of the number. So again, the take-home message here is that any time you make a measurement with a device or an instrument, then your number, the number that you get from that measurement is not perfectly precise. And this is true for all measured numbers. So we're talking about the precision of measured numbers and pointing out that different instruments have different degrees of precision. And hopefully it's pretty easy to see that in this case, scale, numbers, or scale C is more precise than scale B, and scale B is more precise than scale A, because you can see a whole bunch of decimal points at the end of the measurement uh, that was obtained using scale C. However, there's a more formal mathematical way of describing the precision of measured numbers, and we're going to learn about that now. The more formal mathematical way of describing the precision of measured numbers is uh, using a concept called significant digits. So I'm going to describe how to measure the number of significant digits in a measured number um, on this slide. And it may be a little bit confusing at first, but I'll show you a few examples. And at, at the end of it, you'll, you'll have a better sense of what significant digits are. But right now, what I want you to have a sense of is that significant digits are a more formal mathematical way of describing how precise a measurement is. Um, so the way to count the number of significant digits in a measured number is you look at the measured number and you take all of the digits in the number from your measurement. 
and you break those digits into two different groups. You find the digits that are significant, and you also find the digits that are not significant, and those are the two groups. And then you count the number of digits that are significant. If you have a lot of significant digits, it means your measurement was very precise. If you don't have as many significant digits, then it means your measurement was less precise. Okay, so what do I mean by counting the number of significant digits in a measured number? The first thing that you do is you look at each digit in your measured number. So let's pretend that this is my measured number. I measured the distance of something and it was 309 meters in length. I look at each digit. I look at the 3, I look at the 0, and I look at the 9. And I figure out which, num which of these digits are significant and which digits are not significant. So the first rule, a digit is significant if it's not a 0. So if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, then the digit is significant. So in the case of 309 meters, we have 3, which is not a 0, on the left side. We have 9 on the right side, which is also not a 0. So at least two of the digits in this measured number, the 3 and the 9, are significant. So this measured number has at least two significant digits. Next rule is that a digit is also significant if it's a zero and the zero is in between digits that are already significant. So in this case, 309 meters, this zero that's sandwiched in between the three and the nine is also significant because it satisfies this rule. It's a zero that's in between two digits, the three and the nine, that are already significant. So in the case of the measured number 309 meters, this measurement has three significant digits. Each of these digits here is significant. The 3 is significant, the 0 is significant, and the 9 is also significant. Three significant digits. There's another rule about significant digits as they relate to the digit 0. This rule is that a, a digit is significant if it's a 0 that's at the end of a number that contains a decimal. So as an example, let's pretend that this number, 300, without, and this number is without a decimal point, let's pretend that 300 is a measured number. In this case, because there is no decimal point written down, this measured number has only one significant digit, and the significant digit in this case is the digit 3. These zeros are considered to be not significant because there is no decimal point. So this measured number has only one significant digit. And what this means is that the instrument that was used to make this measurement was not terribly precise. This instrument was only capable of telling you that the number was bigger than the number 200 and it was less than the number 400. But it doesn't know where in between 200 and 400 it lies, so you pick uh, the the halfway point and you say that the measured number is 300, let's say it's 300 meters. But in this case, because there's no decimal point, there's only one significant digit. Now, underneath here we have 300, but there is a decimal point written. What that means is that these zeros here at the end of the number satisfy this rule. If you have zeros at the end of a number that contains a decimal, then these zeros are significant. So this measurement, even though it looks to be exactly the same as the, the top measurement, is actually much more precise. This measurement has three significant digits. These zeros count as significant digits. What this means is that the device that was used to make this measurement is much more precise than the device that was used to make the top measurement. And uh, more specifically, those, that decimal point is basically telling you that the device knows that your measurement is bigger than the number 299, but it's less than the number 301. So this measured number is more precise than the number 300. Now, let's look at the third number here, 300.00. All of these digits are significant because they are zeros that come at the very end of a number, and that number contains a decimal. So this number, 300.00, actually contains five significant digits. So this measured number is even much more precise than the second measured number. And what those zeros are basically telling you is that your measurement is good enough, your device is good enough to tell the difference between 299.99, the difference uh, between that and 300.00, and also the difference between 300.00 and 300.01. And that's why it contains five significant digits. And then finally, this number down here contains seven significant digits. The 3, the 9, the 5, and the 9 here are all significant. 
The zero is sandwiched between, this zero here is sandwiched in between the digits three and nine, so this zero is significant. And these zeros come at the end of a number, and this number contains a decimal point. Because of that, these, dig these zeros here are also significant. So every digit in this number is significant. You have seven significant digits. Now, there's a uh, uh, also a set of rules that deal with digits that are not significant. And the only digits, again, that, are, that might not be significant are digits that are zero. But that's only true under special circumstances. And here are the circumstances. A digit is not significant if it's a zero that's part of the beginning of a decimal number. So this number here, 0 0.00393, the three zeros here are at the beginning of the number. And even though there's a decimal point, the fact that they come at the very beginning means that they are not significant. This measured number contains only three significant digits. And the significant digits in this case are the three, the nine, and the three. But the zeros that come at the beginning of the number don't count. They're not significant. Now, the, this may be a little bit confusing, but um, when you put a 1 in front of this, if I wrote 10.00393, then these three zeros actually become significant. The reason they're significant is because of the rule that I mentioned on the previous slide that says that the zeros are significant if they are sandwiched in between digits that are already significant. And the 1 is significant, and the 3 is significant. So in this case, the zeros that come in between actually are significant. So if you had a measured number that was 10.00393, this measured number actually has seven significant digits. If you have a measured number that's just 0 0.00393, this measured number has only three significant digits. The other type of non-significant digit is if you have a zero that's at the end of a non-decimal number. And I, show you, I showed you an example of this on the previous slide, but it's worth showing you again. If you have the number 500 without a decimal point, these zeros come at the end of a number, and this number does not have a decimal point written. That means that these zeros are not significant. The only significant digit is the number 5, so this measured number has only one significant digit. And what this is basically telling you is that whatever instrument was used to make this measurement of 500 is only capable of distinguishing the difference between 400, 500, and 600. It can't tell you that the, uh, that the measurement was 450 of something. It only knows the difference between 400, 500, and 600. So what's the purpose of significant digits? Significant digits are a more formal mathematical way of describing how precise a measurement is. Imagine if you have two different devices to measure the length of your computer screen. And let's say that ruler number one, so that's our device, says that the, the length of my computer screen is 34 centimeters in length. There's a certain amount of precision. There are actually two significant digits in this measurement. I have a different ruler. Ruler number two says that it's actually 33.8 centimeters in length, the, distant, the length of my computer screen. Which measurement, which ruler is more precise? Hopefully you will agree that ruler number two is more precise because there are more significant digits in the measurement. There are three significant digits um, that you get by measuring with ruler number two, and you only get two significant digits by measuring with ruler number one. So this measurement here, the bottom one, is more precise, and you can say that ruler number two is actually more precise than ruler number one. So that's the purpose of significant digits. Significant digits are a more formal mathematical way of describing how precise a measurement is and describing how uh, precise an instrument is at making measurements.